And once you've done that, what is then the process? Now I found out I'd love to go to Munich. I'd love to mm -hmm. be in Samira's lab. <laughs> what then do I do? Do I need to submit this application a certain time of year? What is what is the process? The first thing I would do is find out who the boss is, where is the money coming from, who's in charge of everything, and email that person. And most of the time, that's actually not very hard uh, to find. Email that person and say, introduce yourself, I'm this and that student, I'm interested in this and that research, um, or doing whatever you're interested in doing uh, are you looking for somebody I have and you know it's I don't think um, actually I think it's a very good way to also advertise yourself and definitely attach your CV already there because if they're interested then they can already have a look at what your experience past experiences and where you've worked whether you might be an asset to the lab um, this is what I would I would personally contact them basically and Martin and Barbara, what do you say? What what are the process? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I definitely really agree. I think uh, um, it's very clever what uh, what uh, Samir is saying. Um, yeah, because that's the main interest. But of course, the programs are officially advertised. Most graduate schools will have at least once a year a selection round, as they often call it. Um, for us, it's twice uh, twice a year. As uh, you know, we're a little bit bigger. We take 120 students every year in two rounds of uh, 60 each. And there, the procedure in general is always a bit the same, is that there will be an online application where you have to apply with your CV or the, the content of your CV with references uh, and a statement of interest or a, a motivation letter. Uh, that will be evaluated and then um, applicants, selected applicants will be invited uh, on site. Often that's actually more than one day even uh, of different processes. For us this is uh, part of it is presentations, there will be interviews, there will be what we call speed dating where you can meet different labs and um, uh, you will actually also meet with the PhD students who are here. So they have a, a welcome team of current PhD students who actually, you know, uh, go away from the selection process and uh, the supervisors and take you to town and, and show a bit around so you get really to know the community uh, and that's then where the, the selection uh, is taking place where uh, then regardless of the fact of whether you get financing you know there's financing available uh, by stipends from the Institute uh, but um, and so the best applicants will get uh, a stipend uh, but actually everybody who passes and finds a lab and a match we say like a supervisor who wants the candidate and a candidate who wants the, to join that uh, that group um, that then leads to position but in general you know if you just start with a paper application you know where you haven't actually looked at, at particular groups, a topic of interest, uh, um, your application uh, might not be uh, as good actually uh, for one part and as you say it never harms to already contact supervisors uh, before that, on the contrary and if they have already seen your PhD, if you've already spoken to them or if you've actually identified for example a conference, you know, uh, often that's a good a good place to start is when you when you go to a scientific conference, uh, you know, by the end of your master's studies, and and you actually know some interesting scientists, uh, potential supervisors will be there. That you do your research before, that you identify these, that you write to them, that you say like, well, there might be a chance of uh, of actually meeting you, of talking to you, and. Uh, and that will reflect what you write in your motivation letter and the reason why you apply for a program. Yeah, so that's probably the right way around to do it. Maybe just as a side note, um, if you decide to apply to a graded program, uh, make sure that there are some laboratories that are really interesting to you. Not just that you think, oh, that's a great program, I've heard of this uh, from many people. No, if there are individual laboratories that fit to you, then you should apply. If there's nothing around, like we had people who have studied uh, fishing, fishery, or whatever it's called, fishing, biology, science, and this does not fit to biomedical stuff. Um, so really make sure that it fits, um, and um, then, as Barbara said, you should really know what these laboratories are doing. And this is also the vital thing. If you go by the other route, you send an email to someone, just like Samira, and you apply to one particular laboratory or group, you should know what they have been doing, and you would also mention at least some of this um, in your um, cover letter or email. But just just to to know a little bit about the process. So, Martin, in in, in your lab, 
how do you take on doctoral candidates? Uh, what is the process when you want to hire somebody? Um, so as I said, there are two, two routes. One is the graded school because I, I'm running a graded school. And here it's very much like uh, just Barbara said. There's an interview symposium, as we call this, actually. Uh, in our case, it runs over four days. So invite people from all over the world. We pay for everything. But um, it's relatively tough because there are lots of interviews. And um, I think most graduate schools will then allow um, the candidates to see graduate uh, students who are already there, PIs, the city, and so on and so on. So this is one thing. Um, and then once you get an email, you are selected. Uh, you would then be asked, do you accept? Um, unfortunately, there are always some people who say yes, and then the two months later they say simply, no, I have an, uh, um, there is a nicer city, I want to go to Harvard actually, <laughs> I never really considered to go to your town. <laughs> That's a nuisance, but usually people accept that, and then there is a long time, of several months, uh, that people from, uh, from non-European countries need to get their visa. That's an important um, thing, so that's also why um, usually the selection is far before you would actually start with a PhD. Otherwise, we would not get the people here. And if you have an, in, ask an individual professor, can I work with you? The professor, once he has seen you, so it's always best if you go for interviews, then you can see if you fit to each other. Um, he or she would then say, OK, I've got enough money or not. And if not, you would then, in the second step, would have to apply for a fellowship. This happened to me, for example, when I went to Britain for a postdoc. Suddenly had to apply for a fellowship, which afterwards I, I thought was a really good idea because now I had this in my CV. Uh, and then you can start. So just to, to sum up on, on the procedure, it sounds like it is very decentral. It's very personal. I mean, even if you hear you come from, from disciplines with big labs and big teams, it's still very personal. It's still about getting that contact to your mm. future supervisor, and and then the the process gets rolling. Uh, that's that's probably how we can we can sum it up. 